Good morning. Could there be a better metaphor than what's going on here for co-creating, creation? Uh, I love it. I love it. And it's a great song, by the way. Is that uh, Chris, that's Christine McVie's song, right? Yeah, I love that song. It talks about don't stop thinking about tomorrow. So just real quickly, do me a favor and just uh, close your eyes a little bit. And let's create with each new breath. Just concentrate on your breathing for just a just become aware of the newness that's happening in the space between each breath. Do that little bit of centering. Okay, welcome back. We're done. No. Um, <laughs> life is the mirror of king and slave alike. Let me tell you a little creation story. There are so many creation stories all around the world in Africa and the Chinese. My ancestry is Native American, so I always try to draw, and there's so many of them. And uh, one of them talk, talks about in the beginning how there was only darkness, and suddenly a small little bearded man appeared. He probably didn't really have a beard if he was Native, but that's okay. <laughs> Took me 16 years to grow this. <laughs> This little man uh, without a beard, was, uh, he was called the one who lives above. And one day he appeared and he was rubbing his eyes as if, as if he had just woken up. Then he rubbed his hands together and suddenly appeared the little girl. Her name was Girl Without Parents. And the creator rubbed his face with his hands and suddenly there stood the sun god. And the creator rubbed his sweaty brow and then from his hands dropped small boy. Now there were four gods that had been created. Then he created Tarantula. Then he created the Big Dipper and Wind and the Lightning Maker and Lightning Rambler. All four gods shook hands so that the sweat mixed together. And when they did, Creator rubbed his palms together and from his hands smell fell a small round little ball. So they took the little ball and they started playing with it, started playing soccer, Quidditch. So, <laughs> They took turns kicking the ball around, and Creator told the wind, Wind, go inside and blow up this ball. So Creator goes in, and the ball blows up. Then Tarantula spun a black cord, which he attached to the ball. And then he took it to the east, pulling as hard as he could. He repeated this, and a blue cord to the south, a yellow cord to the north, and a white cord to the south. And when he was done, the brown ball had become earth. And creators rubbed his hands again and created Hummingbird. He said, Hummingbird, fly all over the world and see what's there. And when Hummingbird returned, he said, there's water that's over to the west, but the earth is wobbly and unstable. So he says, okay. So he posts, he makes posts all around the four cardinal directions, which he ties cords to, to stabilize the, stabilize the earth and the creation of all people, and birds and trees, and everything that took place happened after that. Now, every culture, of course, and every religion has its own creation story, right? Uh, some, some of them are complex, some of them are simple, some of them have some baggage. You feel me on that one? Uh, um, did any of you see the movie Noah? You know, well, you came out of that going, what? You know, and so... Uh, my point is creation stories can be as fantastical as we can certainly make them and invent them. But we're here to talk about a different kind of creation, the miracle of co-creating, really. We're talking about the more personal creation. And when you think about it, isn't that how all creation and all change really starts with our, ourselves? Gandhi said, be the change you want to see in the world. He didn't say, change the world you want to be in, did he? <laughs> He knew that's impossible. I uh, couldn't do that. Fast forward to Ernest Holmes in the early 1900s. He's the, the, the founder of uh, religious science, if anyone doesn't know. And when he came about, there were these two schools of new thought that were, that were around. And one of them said, you can only create, you can only manifest, is a word that, that they used back then. You can only, um, uh, let me see, they also call it demonstrate, I guess is the word they called it back then. Some said you can only demonstrate by mind. The other school said you can only demonstrate through spirit. But 
you know, if, if you think about that, that's really not possible because why? There's only one power. And if we were to think that you could only demonstrate through one or the other, then we would have to admit that there is duality. And so our idea of unity would, you know, kind of, kind of not follow suit. So let's think about this. There's only one active intelligence. Some people call it um, spirit. You can call it uh, intelligence, divine wisdom. You know, the, um, in native culture, it's, uh, it's often called the great mystery or creator. They're really all one in the same, if you think about it. So uh, there's really only one, and there's two, com two, two, two components about it that are pretty interesting. One is that this active intelligence that we're co-creating with, it's an unbreakable bond that's forever linked to us, that's always ready to receive our desire, our input. But the second part, I think, is the most important. Creation with this active intelligence cannot exceed your understanding or your belief in it. Does that make sense? So say, for instance, Edie, that you wanted a, a, a new car, but uh, you didn't see yourself in a, you couldn't see yourself driving a new car, and you would think, I don't deserve a new car. Not that you would ever think that, dear, I know, but uh, <laughs> just an example, because she's there. <laughs> um, so what we're creating is only equal to our understanding and our belief in, in co-creating. Like, for instance, what's going on in this fantastic building? You know, when that hellstorm came through and did so much damage, well, we had to get together and create a vision together. And in that vision, by creating that vision, by that very act of coming together, creating that vision, it's like you're linking little golden threads to each one of those desires, each one of those, where well, we're going to have a new roof, we're going to have a beautiful new floor, we're going to have walls. What color are they going to be? Ah, pretty. <laughs> what color is that? <laughs> I like that desert rose. I like the purple candles too. <laughs> Where'd you get those? No. Um, and here's the thing about using this co-creative power. It's only going to evolve your understanding of it as you involve it in your everyday experience. Let me say that again. It's only going to evolve your understanding of it. In other words, you're only going to grow with it as you involve it in your everyday experience. So let's get to the heart of the matter. You know, the truth is we're never not creating. We're never not creating. You lose 10,000, 10 million cells every second to replace the 10 million cells that just died. You know, so in other words, it's that constant. Your, um, your body, it's it said, you don't have any of the same cells that you did seven years ago. So in other words, every cell in your organ is replacing every seven year cycle. So it makes you wonder, why are we still angry at so-and-so, you know, or why we're still, <laughs> hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so like, say that you want some new shoes, you know, or, or, or say that, cat, you want a new coworker, you know. Uh, well, <laughs> what you have to do, uh, you have to sit with yourself and, and start to create what you want. So, in other words, you are, you're creating with every thought, every utterance, every action, every word creating and you're sending out what Abraham calls these rockets of desire everywhere going in every direction all around the globe. The secret is to do this intentionally and deliberately and that's our part in it. Now the other part, the part of, of spirit, of this active intelligence, all we got to do is, is say, you know, I would like to experience more of this in my life and I'm going to give you some techniques of how we can do that. Ernest Holmes, in um, the, the 1926 ed edition of the, of, of the Science of Mind textbook, he, 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 he was saying when we create something, when we sit down to create, to demonstrate, to manifest, maybe we should ask ourselves first, do these things that we want lend themselves to a constructive program? Do they express a more abundant life? Do they rob no one, create no delusion? But instead, do they express a greater degree of livingness, livingness? If they do, then all the powers in the universe must be behind them. If it's money, if it's automobiles, houses, land, stock, bonds, dresses, shirts or shoestrings, cabbages, he even says, all which come from the same source, then there can be nothing 
that either in the law or in the spirit back of the law to deny us the right to the greatest possible expression of life. And there's great exercises, great affirmations, great meditations that, that are in the, the Science of Mind textbook that, that, that talk about, you know, you tell yourself daily, all the joy that can ever be experienced is now mine. And that's a bold statement. But if you believe it, then it's, it's a true statement. And by that very statement, well, it has to happen. That's simply the law of, of the way that things work. Likewise, we can use that in a contrasting way. And we can say, nothing ever works out for me. I have the worst luck. Nothing ever goes my way. Guess what we're doing? We're saying, yeah, that's exactly what we want to experience more of. So like the duality that I was talking about um, a little earlier, we have to understand that there is only one intelligence at work that responds to our vibrational outputting of it. It's like a movie screen, and we're the projectors, and the movie, and the lighting. <laughs> Uh, you know, scientists, are, they're really getting closer and closer to identifying this stuff called substance that Ernest Holmes talk, talked about. They're starting to deconstruct. You know, you had the, um, you know, boson-Higgs particle, but there's even more. All of a sudden, I, I read something pretty recently that scientists now think that they understand what makes everything. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. We're way ahead of you, man. <laughs> <laughs> the, world is our, the world is our direct mirror. Isn't that a scary thought? I oh, know. I mean, isn't that a great thought? Uh, <laughs> the world is our great, is our mirror. And think about it. You know, like when you're late going somewhere, and you're oh, you're impatient. You're going down Missouri, which I'm not ever sure is ever going to be completed. <laughs> Did you see what they're painting there? A, a cougar or a leopard? A leopard. I didn't know. <laughs> I only see roadrunners and coyotes when I'm out, but. Uh, <laughs> Maybe the leopards are hiding. <laughs> it's all good. <clears throat> Where was I? Oh, yeah. So here you are driving along, and you're going, gosh, I'm, I'm, I'm late, like Mary Lynn was probably experiencing this morning on her way. <laughs> they had a very late gig last night, so they played. What did you play till like 11 or something? I know. Yeah, I feel you, honey. <laughs> so... Um, uh, so you're, you're driving it, and you're impatient as heck, and you're going, God, why is everybody driving so slow? And then people are cutting in front of you and stuff. Not that it ever happens to any of you like that, right? <laughs> Guess what? You're projecting that impatience. You're experiencing that impatience. Universe, intelligence, spirit says, oh, is that what you want? Well, let me give you more. It knows no bad. It knows no good. It, it doesn't know that impatience is not what you, something you don't want to experience. It only knows... You're experiencing it, so you must like it, and you must want it. Same, same thing goes when you're feeling loving and open and putting good posts on Facebook. You know, um, All of a sudden, people start inviting you on a trip or to lunch. Have you ever noticed those kind of things you know, in your own life when the way that you're feeling is directly mirrored back, back to you? Well, there's a reason for that, and that's exactly what we're talking about this entire month and, of course, um, every day. You know, thoughts of peace produce peace, okay? Freed, freed thoughts produce freedom. Judging thoughts produce... Judgment. You guys are good. Emerson said, if you want friends, be a friend. Or hire someone to get you friends on Facebook. Um, <laughs> no, it's... Uh, sorry, that's the wrong message. No. <laughs> Twitter has a service. You can, I, I get that every day from people. Uh, you want more, want more followers? Not necessarily. You know. <laughs> hundred bucks. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm going to introduce this word called prayer because prayer goes hand in hand with creation, with the miracle of creation, with co-creating. It's been said the answer to prayer is in the prayer itself. And when the, when the prayer is answered, it's identical to what? The prayer itself. I love that. I, I love knowing that, that, that prayer doesn't, it's not necessarily a, a petition or a begging or a pleading, but it's, it's in the prayer itself. And the answer is always going to be identical to the, to the prayer, which is pretty amazing. So are, are you understanding that, you know, and like... Um, the uh, um, you know, reading that this morning was from Don Miguel Ruiz, and he talks a lot about how 
your life is like a movie theater. How when you go into, I, I think the example he, he uses, this is in the chapter that talks about uh, don't take anything personally, <laughs> the most important chapter in my opinion. <laughs> he talks about being in a theater and you're watching your life up on screen there and the person next to you is watching their life on screen and the person next to you is watching their life up on the screen and none of you are aware that there are others in the theater that are watching their own life. But at any moment we are creating, you know, um, Shakespeare had it so right whenever um, she said, all the world is a stage, <laughs> which, is a, uh, which is exactly right. There, there's this great, this, this great uh, saying that I've always loved. It says, it is said that the hand writes and then passes on, but the writing is left there nevertheless. So it said, the hand writes, then passes on, but the writing is left there nevertheless. Now, if, if you want to change that writing, uh, of course, you have to change. In other words, if you want a um, you know, different character, you have to completely go, go in. It says like a whiteboard. You have to go and erase it all. So say that we're experiencing a, a, a life that we're not necessarily thinking that we want to be in. Things aren't going well. Maybe we aren't. We're experiencing lack. Maybe we're experiencing bad health or some un, un, unhappiness at, at some level. Well, what are the choices? Well, you know, one choice would be to transcend all that's gone before. That's why I like that. Like in that song that um, that they sang, you know, um, yesterday's gone. Yesterday's gone. That's a great line. So our choice is to transcend all that's gone before, or to walk above it, right? Or you can neutralize it by an opposite state of consciousness, maybe, or you can endure it. <laughs> Wait till it's over. Have you ever tried to change someone's mind? <laughs> You're right. Well, you certainly, you, you can't. It's, it, 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 it's, it's impossible. Um, I have friends who argue with, uh, with the radio, you know. <laughs> It's like, turn it off, man. You know, you're not, but don't they know that? No, they don't. They don't see. It. This is their experience. I really considered doing an entire, doing an entire message on the elect, election, current election, and how to change that. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> so, let's say that we want to create the best life for ourselves and for other people. And of course, we, and we have to want, we can't want peace for just us. We can't want love and abundance for just our group of people, right? It has to be the, the, for the benefit, which is why we always say here, in, for the best, in the best way for the highest good. There's a reason that we say that because we understand as everyone prospers, you know, we all prosper. So I came up with uh, seven steps to co-create your best life and also the best world. But before we can even go into that, we have to admit to ourselves or al allow for the idea that, um, that there's something greater than, our, than ourselves, that we're plugged into something that we can, hand in hand, we're connected like, like H2O molecules. You know, we're connected to that source. So here's, here's the first step. And this is very important, and it's been effective in my own life tremendously. Write out the qualities that you want to demonstrate. Just write them down. Even, you can be as simple as peace, wealth, love, etc. Daily visualize all of those qualities. And if you're not a visual person, then, you know, see what it feels like, maybe hear what it sounds like, what it, what it tastes like, but daily visualize those qualities that you want to demonstrate in your life first. Number three is see yourself happy. <laughs> you know how hard that is sometimes? See yourself happy. When I finish my meditation, I, I have this thing that I say I would like to co-create my day now. And one of the things is I see myself smiling, I see myself being happy, I see myself saying thank you a lot. So see yourself happy, enjoying friends in a clean, clutter-free, clutter, I can't even say the word, <laughs> clutter-free surroundings. That's very important. Visualize your house clean. I've been doing that for a while now. <clears throat> oh, do it again. <laughs> 
Now here's a wild thing. Make a list of the headlines you want to be reading or hear on the radio. Make a list of those headlines. If, and if you're really creative and have a lot of time on your hands, you know, draw, like, make, make something. You can record your own stories to yourself. You can talk to yourself as you're walking in the desert alone so nobody sees you doing that. <laughs> Write a list or simply speak to yourself of things that you love. And I mean everything, everything. This morning, I slept in my own bed, which is amazing. So, because um, the night before I slept on my cot and I froze down in the deserts near Silver City. Get in the habit of, of, of saying that you love everything. I love chocolate. I love when traffic goes my way. I love chili. I love my friends. I love that song. I love this film. I love, in other words, don't use that other word. Make a note of the ideal president and politicians that you think our world mutually needs and would benefit from for the highest good. Make a quality. Say, you know, I would like our leaders to be this and that. I had a, ta a little chat with uh, Skip this morning, and we were talking about the uh, Pope, you know, and, and, and we were saying, well, if we were still Catholic, he'd be, you know, we'd really like him. I mean, we do like him anyway. That didn't come out, but. <laughs> and I, I thought, he's the greatest idea of a spiritual leader. He's my ideal spiritual leader. He went to, he took those refugees and said, this is how it's done, you know. <laughs> They're coming home with me. And they get to ride in the Pope mobile. <laughs> oh, it's not very big, though, is it, anymore? Where he's going to put him. Um, affirm perfect health, perfect wealth, perfect love, perfect employment, perfect neighbors, space flight, healthy food. Affirm all of that. I have this thing that I say every day. I perform my music in a perfect way for wonderful people and for perfect pay. And guess what? I do. Make that commitment to yourself. Make that pledge to yourself. The last one, the most important, I think, is have gratitude for every good thing. This morning, like I said, I was so grateful. I thought, oh, I'm in my own bed. I don't have to pack up my tent and anything. I can just sleep. And I thought, oh, wait, I have to go speak. But at least I was grateful you know, for that, uh, for that experience. So have gratitude for every good thing. And when you're experiencing something good, this is what I always do. I always take a moment and I pause and I feel how it feels. And I say, I'd like more of this. I'd like more of this. Don't ever say, I will have more of this or I'm going to. I'm going to. has to be in the present. And I always say, I am appreciating this experience. More of this is coming to me now in a perfect way for the highest good. We have to close that gap. Bless you. We have to close that gap between the world we would like to experience and the world that we want to experience. Okay, like, like say that you all of a sudden have this giant bill that, 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 that comes to you and you think, oh, I didn't know I was going to have to pay tax this year. Well, the way you close that gap is by, it takes five minutes. The way you close that gap is you feel, you can feel abundant now. You can feel happy now. You can feel joyous. You can feel appreciative. You can feel how it will feel when, when, when you're surrounded by good friends or, or when your house sells or when you get that new house or whatever that, that you need. It's the feeling part that's the important part. Not necessarily that, that oh, you know, it's never going to happen. Uh, what, what steps do I need to take? So come up with how you feel. I, I am abundant now. Visualize what you want to happen. Know that as soon as you do that, spirit gets, gets to work. The same force that creates stars and mosquitoes, you know, it's, or cabbages, as Ernest Holmes says, it's there. Rumi said, your hand opens and closes, opens and closes. If it were a fist or if it were always stretched out, it would be paralyzed. Your deepest presence is in every small contracting and expanding. And these two as beautifully balanced and coordinated as birds' wings would give them flight. And so it is.